Hello, I'm Azim Azar, and welcome to Really Possible from Elastic. AI, AI, AI is everywhere. But today we're going to learn from business leaders about how much better it can be when you bring your company data with it. Let's turn to data. Yes. How important is it for businesses to be able to bring their own data to their AI projects? I'll give you a good example. For one of our clients uh, doing a, just an FAQ channel for customers, which incidentally ends up being a very useful thing and it helps everybody. 90% uh -huh. um, of the effort was making the data useful. And 10% was dealing with whatever model you want. So the barrier to entry is super low. And thus, whatever you're building to be competitive, the only thing that matters is the data. Mm -hmm. Your uniqueness is your information, your knowledge of your customer reflected in the data or your knowledge of your product, whatever it might be. Um, and the way I, I think customers should use it or people should think about it is, if you're struggling with your data, this is a fabulous time to say, well, you're all very excited about this. Let's look back into the data. And maybe, Jenny, I can help us a little bit with making the data useful. And critically, these language models, these AI systems, they do know about language. They don't necessarily know about our data. So what are the things that you can do when you pair the language model with our data? I do think that that, that is going to hit a wall because it's going to come back to the problem of search, which is that our relationship with knowledge is that we're asking a small question, we're getting an answer, and we're processing that answer. So I think there's a potential for these things to change that and say, well, actually, I'm not actually searching for something. I am working in this con in the context of writing a paper on reasoning. Mm -hmm. And within that context, I'm in need of some aspects of information and I'm in need of help the way I'm put in putting forward this information or summarizing it or making it more interesting to read. So you think get them in front of some of these tools, put them on top of uh, some of your data and show what could be done. It has to be your data. Because if, again, if it's open to the world, then you're not really adding anything to your company, right? So make people experience it with their own data, use it, and you're gonna have to add education on the side so people know what, they, what you're asking them to achieve and how, and we haven't talked about safety yet, but how to do it safely and sensibly and all these kind of things. Businesses are built on their customer relationships, expertise, and of course, uh, their data. So how important is it for a business to be able to bring its own data to the table if it's going to make the most of Gen AI? The truth is all businesses have data um, and maybe it's not cleanly represented in a kind of tabular, you know, data store or something, some clean schema, but all businesses have data. And um, actually this, I think, is one of the the differences between this kind of wave of AI and previous waves of AI excitement is these new models, generative AI models, are very good at processing and understanding unstructured data. Uh, like text data. Text, but also, you know, uh, GPT-O and Gemini are multimodal by design. That Those multimodal capabilities will increase because if you've been around for a few decades, um, you've accumulated, you know, you might call it tech debt or you might just call it like, you know, a lot of different assets and, mm -hmm. they, and those, that data presents itself in many different formats. Yeah. So in an example you've given, this one email has three or four different types of data in it. It's got a spreadsheet, it's got photos, and it's got uh, text instructions, but that's unique to you. That doesn't exist in the big large language models. So the, the value actually comes from the integration of the large language model with information that is unique to you in your context at this moment. And so yeah, very much. These models need to be fully integrated and they need to be adapted to the specific um, kind of information environment on context uh, of that business. And so, you know, there's arguments, is it all gonna be kind of what's called in-context learning? Can we put all of the relevant information in the prompt? Mm -hmm. uh, or do we have to fine tune these models to our specific businesses? Um, I, I think the jury's out, I'm more of a fine tune kind of a person, but um, because I think you learn on the job, you're not constantly kind of doing everything with your short term memory, you, you, you know, you're, you're, your experiences in a, in a business change you and change your perception. So that's a quite a helpful analogy. I, th I think the idea that, uh, you know, when you take an employee and you, you first hire them, 
they have to adapt to the work environment. And in the same way we look at these AI models, they might come with a great deal of capability, but they only start to become really relevant when they understand the specific business context. Exactly, yeah, and I think, you know, totally. And, and, and for every business, their data is probably their greatest asset. But I think the one thing here is that it doesn't, for the first time ever, it doesn't actually strictly need to be all structured. You know, previously all the data had to have a nice schema for yeah, you to it leverage to it. Like but, a rigid but, database. But today and, yeah. we can truly unlock that value. And I think a great use case actually of generative AI is um, passing the unstructured data and putting it into the core data stores and systems of record such that they become stronger and more useful. Yeah. Um, and uh, I actually think, you know, that's one of the great unsung um, hyper valuable use cases of this technology. Well, for a business to make that type of decision, it seems like they have to bring their own data to the table. Somebody else's data often come with their own pathologies, by which I mean some sort of gap between your mental model of how the data were created and the reality of how the data were created. So often for any digital company, there's an opportunity to think rigorously about the telemetry, the observability, the tracking of information in such a way that the data that you work with are going to be accessible, available, accurate, actionable, and useful to the goals of the company. How important is a company's own data to that picture? So I think, as far as I'm concerned, there are three differentiators in a business, and I think we've had you know, access to phenomenal, powerful technologies for, for many decades. Um, the, 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 the three differentiators are data. It's the data that makes the AI smart. If you've got data that contains signals that are comp uh, different to your competitors, then you're going you're to win. The second differentiator is leadership. If leadership are not bought into the transformational power of AI, you're wasting your time. And then the third is, is talent. It's AI talent, it's domain expertise and enabling that talent to build innovations that are able to um, to move the needle for your organization. Um, but but it, it's really is data that makes the AI smart and, and that's what I'd be advocating organizations to look for is the signals that differentiate you. Find out what's really possible for your business with Search AI. Learn more at explore.elastic.co.